What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Inside Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Atoya Burleson, and let's talk about week one. Week one was a wild one. That's right. I'm talking Dak Prescott, who became the highest paid player in NFL history. Jamar Chase, who decided, even though he didn't get his new deal, he was still going to play, which everyone was shocked about. Justin Fields is starting over. Russell Wilson, who was ruled out for week one. And then Tyreek Hill was detained by the police outside the stadium for a driving violation. And as people drove by and watched, the police put him face down on the ground, knee in his back while pulling his arms behind him and handcuffing him over a driving violation. Um, I'm not going to lie, as a mother of two black, well, not even boys, but men now, that was really disturbing for me to watch. I can't even get it out. Um, It was hard to watch. I was shocked. Then I was angry. And I just thought to myself, who treats someone like this over a traffic violation? It it was deliberate the way it looked. Um, They knew who he was. They knew his car. Um, and I was just shocked that even as the players drove by and was like checking on him, making sure that he was okay, these police, these police officers still felt like it was okay to do what they did. But I will say this, the good news is there is one police officer that was already placed on administrative leave. That doesn't really mean anything. We all know that because when they get placed on administrative leave, it's basically a timeout that taxpayers play, uh, pay for. They still get paid and we have to pay it. So they need to figure out a better system of dealing with uh, police officers that uh, violate and abuse their power. And we shouldn't have to pay for it. Uh, if they make a mistake or if they make multiple mistakes, whatever the case may be, and you get put on administrative leave, you should not be paid. Um, we also should not pay for it. And there should be real consequences. So I I really hope with this happening, the good that comes out of it is uh, they really come up with some better solutions to dealing with police officers that continually choose to treat black men this way. What Tyreek said was brilliant. He said, you know, you know who I am. You know, imagine how they treat people who aren't, they don't have a platform. No one knows who they are. And no one's looking. And so, you know, I I really hope and pray that some good comes out of this, that the police department really looks within and figures out a way to uh, resolve this in a way that is a win-win for the citizens of the city of Miami and that this doesn't happen again. Um, Well, I'll be watching to see how it unfolds and I will keep y'all updated. But in the meantime... Let's talk a little fantasy football. Um, (laughs) I don't know about y'all, but week one for me went great. Um, Saquon Barkley, he balled out. He opened the floodgates for me. And I feel like everybody else just stepped up after that. I mean, I killed it week one. I'm not going to get too excited, though, because we all know week one means nothing. And... um, I just want to say I'm glad that I'm off to a great start and I can't wait to see what happens week two. And I really want some of the quarterbacks to like kill it consistently this year. I felt like it was up and down last year and I'm still seeing that as I look, you know, on other people's teams. But I just want some quarterbacks to really step up and be consistent. That's one thing we loved about Tom Brady. And that's why he's the GOAT is because he was consistent every single week. You knew what to expect and get out of him. And I'm really looking for some quarterbacks to really step up and do that. AKA Dak Prescott, who is now the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. You got to be consistent, bro. Every single week, you better bring it because everyone's watching. (laughs) All right, y'all, enough about that. Let's get into our interview with Wyos.
On the show today, we have Jamie Glassman, CEO and founder of Wyos, and Wendy Charlin, COO and co-founder of Wyos, which is a personal care line that is simple, mess-free, and easy to travel with. They are both passionate, experienced beauty executives who met at L'Oreal, partnering on the acquisition and launch of Essie, driving it to the number one brand in the category. Please welcome to the show, Jamie Glassman and Wendy Charlin. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. Thanks Thanks for for having having us. us. I am so happy to have you on. Thank you for joining. Okay, I want to get right into it because you have worked together for so long. (laughs) Let's talk about how did you both meet? Okay, this is a funny story. I'm going to start, Jamie. Okay, you start. Fine. So, okay, I I met Jamie years and years and years ago when she was a kid. I'm older than she is, in case you couldn't tell. And I was... They probably actually, couldn't because your skin is so good. I know, I have good skin. Um, <laughs> I, I worked at Revlon um, for Jamie's mother. Oh, and wow. then I moved to L'Oreal and HR asked me to interview Jamie. And I was like okay, but I'm going to give her a very hard interview. You know, personal connections aside, like we need to know she really has the skills to make it work here. So I gave Jamie a really hard interview and... And I am a very confident person. So like I go into the interview, I've never gone into an interview that I didn't think I did a fantastic job at. Like just to give you an example of this, I don't play tennis and I took a tennis lesson and I asked the guy if he thought that I could be in the intermediate classes after the lesson. And he was like, no, I think you can be in the advanced. And I was like, yeah, of course I can. I'm so good. Beginner. (laughs) And I was like, oh my God. Advanced (laughs) beginner. No. You were like, yes, wait, what? (laughs) So that just gives you an idea of my overall confidence level, like not having played tennis in 10 years. Um, But so I'm really confident. And I left the interview and I was like, oh, my God, I didn't get the job. That was the hardest interview. I totally bombed. I met my mother for lunch afterwards. I was like, this woman who used to work for you interviewed me and I didn't get the job and it's my dream job and I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Anyway, and, and, you know, what I said, I went back to HR and said, she's unbelievable. We have to hire her and I want her on my team. She's going to be the perfect mix for, you know, the yin to my yang is what we still say today. Um, It's rare that you find a team member, partner, you know, outside of your family that you can really balance with. And I, I knew it even from the interview. That is so cool. And that's so interesting when you think about it, because I've heard that before. Some people, they have went into interviews thinking like, oh, my God, that was terrible. And then they get the call back. They're like, wait, what? So like, what was it for you, Jamie, where you were like, I did terrible. And then, Wendy, you have to tell me what you saw in her that you felt was so important. She asked really hard questions. Like, it was a pretty junior job. And I was pretty used to like, tell me about yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses on your one point resume that has no real substance whatsoever, you know? And Wendy comes in and she's like, how do you organize your notebook? If I gave you this math problem, how would you go about doing this? And I was like, wait, what? This is a cosmetic marketing job. (laughs) (laughs) So for me, I like to see what makes people tick. So how you organize your day and how you approach work tells a lot about how you structure yourselves. Are you fly by the seat of your pants? Do you come in? Are you thoughtful? How do you manage complexity? Tricked you. <laughs> <laughs> I fully fly by the seat of my pants. Yeah. She that's definitely not thought she, I was more organized. Than that's I not am. how she answered the question. Let's just say <laughs> I, I make the shared priority list for us. Okay like on a regular basis so that she's on top of the same priorities as me or else she'd be like, oh, we should work on this today. And I'd be like, okay, but we do have an investor meeting today. So maybe that should be on hold. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So for you, Wendy, when you saw her, there was something you saw in her that was different. Cause I'm sure you interview a lot of people. What was it about Jamie that stood out to you? So she was highly energetic. She came off as very confident and competent. 
and showed a real passion, not just for the industry. A lot of people come in and say, oh, I love beauty. I love been wearing makeup. Love this, I mean, this was someone who came in and said, you know, she talked to me about the business of beauty, which is a whole different, you know, story. And I, I just knew that she was going to be great. And uh, I was right. And you were right. That's awesome. I was right. So you both have run these large consumer brands, whether it's Maybelline, L'Oreal, there's, there's so many. But when you think about that, what was it during that time where you worked together then, you decided to branch off and start something on your own? Now, this I, is a story. <laughs> I honestly don't know how we spent so much time apart. Now that I think about it, like... I really can't imagine if we go three days without speaking. I feel like I have to hold on to Wendy, three days like, physically. We're, touch her we'll be the working whole day. in her, we'll be working in her apartment, and I uh. get up and she's like, "Where are you going?" I'm like, "Uh, to the bathroom." Like, <laughs> where do you think I'm going? <laughs> I had left L'Oreal. I'll tell you the quick version of the story. I had left L'Oreal to go run a brand incubator um, that had to be dissolved for a number of reasons, um, having to do with the company going public. But I had the beginning of this idea for Wyos, really the beginning of the idea for a solid stick brand. And at that time, there was a celebrity that was involved. It was a celebrity partner brand. And Wendy and I got together often for drinks and we met at this the is where Hotel. tequila and martinis really Ooh, play an good. influence okay. in our business partnership yeah so we met at the mark hotel and wendy's like what are you up to and i'm like oh, i'm working on this amazing thing with this super impressive celebrity who's a top 10 tiktoker <laughs> and wendy said to me it would I be said, so oh, cool i wish i could do this with you i miss you know, our partnership and working together. Mm. Meanwhile, I've been I've been in corporate America like my whole career. So okay. I I really didn't have that like itch to be an entrepreneur. Okay. And I said, You can be. You can do it with me. And then uh, there's a little more nuance than this, but the next day she quit her job. <laughs> so was it the you can be or was it the tequila and martinis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll let I'll let you decide, but let's just say I really wasn't planning on leaving a company I had been with for 14 years and right. had tons of amazing experiences. But I will say, I think we can both say our favorite role of our careers was working together on Essie because we have this very balanced um partnership mm-hmm. where you know, Jamie is extroverted and I'm introverted and there are things that Jamie loves to work on and I'm like, have at it. And there's things I love to work on. And she's like, yeah, I don't even want to know what you're talking about. (laughs) And um, it really works well. Yeah. Okay. So here's my question, because I know there's entrepreneurs listening. It's hard to leave your corporate job. It's hard to leave any job, right? Like there's that comfortability in where you are. How difficult was it not to take take the leap? Because you said you took the leap like the next day. But after you took the leap, were you like, "Ah, what did I do? So I would say, and Jamie can attest to this, for me, it took me a good six weeks to kind of find my footing. Like, Okay. okay, what am I doing? I'm here. What is this like company we're running and raising capital and things I had never done before? Mm hmm. But even in the like most horrible times, and there are, as a, every entrepreneur knows, there are times that are just like grueling. Even during those grueling times, I've never looked back and said, oh, I shouldn't have left. That's good. Which is kind of crazy because this was never like in the cards for me until uh, it was. I will say she did freak out a little bit, as did I, when said celebrity called me at midnight on a Saturday night and told me he was out and no longer interested in partnering on the brand. And we had raised all the money with him as the partner. And so literally, Wendy had just quit her job and we were now starting from square one in terms of brand, raising capital, everything. (laughs) Wow. 
So right. I was a little panicky. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But that's, I think these are important stories to share because, you know, as entrepreneurs, there's those pitfalls that you don't expect, right? Like just out of nowhere, things could change and you have to figure out how to pivot. Yeah, all um, the time, how, every day. Yeah. How was that time, like in that moment? I mean, obviously there's a little bit of panic, but how do you pivot and how do you, you know, try to figure it out for how, how do we not only pivot, but share this story in a completely different way because the person that we use was literally pulled out of it. So talk about that. I mean, I think one thing Jamie and I often do, we call it white paper and we mm. literally take out white paper and map out where are we, what are the facts, what do we know, where do we want to go, and we start kind of ideating, and we have these white paper days and shut ourselves in a room, in a place, and I mean... It's funny, I don't know if you remember this, Wendy, but our first day physically working together, we both showed up with Ziploc bags filled with white paper, (laughs) post-it notes, markers, and gifts for each other with letters. Which like is adult so, art but and But like crafts. not discussing it before. No, but we brought each other gifts too. And both brought each other gifts. Oh, so was... we're obviously, we're very in sync on where we had yes. to start the journey, knowing mm-hmm. that we were at a very new starting point. And that's yes. really lucky based on our past history. Mm-hmm. Um, not everyone has that. I, I said after having done it alone for a bit with this celebrity, I don't think I would have made it if Wendy hadn't come and mm. joined and this person had dropped out. I think I, I, I don't know. I'd like to think I wouldn't have thrown in the towel, but <laughs> I, I might have. I think that's, that's an important point for entrepreneurs. If you're doing it alone, make sure you have an amazing support system. Yes. The thing with us is when, you know, There are going to be things that are amazing and you have to celebrate. We're not great at doing it, but we do try to push ourselves to celebrate even the little wins. And there are days that are really, really tough. You're not getting the results you want or a meeting doesn't go as you expected. And I will say being in it with someone makes it easier. Yes. Jamie and I handle those moments totally, totally differently. And we've gotten to the point, like we're sitting in an airport and we're like, okay, don't talk to me. <laughs> don't tell me about what you're working on to re-energize. And I won't tell you what I'm working on to re-energize. But there are times where we both pick each other up, where one is feeling it harder than the other. And mm. I think having that partner, just like in life, you have your, you know, your family, your partners, your team, Yes. It's super important. I agree. And I think about, you know, just working with people in general, whether it's in the entrepreneurship world or, you know, corporate working with whoever you work with on a project. There's something about having someone that gets you and you get them and you can be completely different to your point, but you guys just click. That's very, very rare. And I've heard about the partnership pitfalls, right? And how it just does not work out. What do you look for as an entrepreneur in a partner to your point that is it is it opposites attract, but you also, you know, complement each other? What is it that people look for? Because I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle not only with if they wanted to bring someone in as a partner, but also people on their team. I mean, I think and Jamie probably knows what I'm going to say. You have to have the hard conversations. Yeah. They're not fun. You have to be brave and have the hard conversations and say, I don't agree. And this is why, or I don't appreciate this is the way you're doing things. And sometimes those conversations can be really difficult. We've both had them with each other. You have to have the hard conversations and you have to be able to resolve and move on and hash Mm -hmm. things out. And I think some of our best moments have been after one of those hard conversations where we're both kind of a bit destroyed and then pick ourselves back up and figure out how we're going to move forward. That's good. That's actually great advice. What about you, Jamie? Yeah, I think in terms of choosing partners and working with partners, you need to remember, just like any kind of partner, that no one's perfect 
right? And certainly no one's perfect every moment of every day and why you're their partner. So Wendy does things that drive me totally insane, but those are also the things that make us good partners. Like sometimes I'll text my husband like, I, Wendy's reacting this way and I need to do this and be creative and figure out something else. And he'll be like, well, sounds like you're perfect partners. And he's right. <laughs> But you have to remember that when yeah. you're, you know, and I do the same thing to her. I, I, she's in the numbers and in the spreadsheet. And I'm like, well, if we hand out 4,000 pieces of product in the airport or, you know, to strangers, maybe we can change the trajectory of this. And by the way, guess what our intern is doing right now? Helping us make <laughs> and, luggage tags to hand like, out or, at the airport. Or we could actually look at the facts. And But so, you know, those things drive us crazy about each other, but they're also what make us successful as partners. And I think when you're partners, picking... partners, yeah, for sure. There's no such thing as um, love at first sight. I think you need to get to know people. We've made the mistake of love at first sight. An agency pitches you something or someone on an interview pitches you something and you're like, oh, this is the answer to all my dreams. This is everything I need. I'm going to grow 20% you know, next week with 5x ROI. And that's never actually true. <laughs> that's good. Actually, that's great advice. <laughs> Because uh, I think we all hear those, you know, pitches, um, you know, the selling, right, of what, you know, that's how they get their business as well. So I, I appreciate you talking about that. Um, I want to go into um, talking about your actual product of Wiles because I think it was fantastic and I've enjoyed using it. And Thank you. I want to talk about that. Um, I was at a retreat and Wendy, you were there, and I remember the product. I thought, oh my gosh, this is actually really cool. And it just so happened, I took it on a, uh, a vacation as my husband and I, we went on vacation, I used it, and it was fantastic. And you didn't have to worry about A, whether it's a liquid, um, you didn't have to worry about, you know, figuring out where to have to put in, check it in, put it in my checked bag, or I have to, you know, you could just put it in your, your regular luggage and carry it. And it actually worked. It's fantastic. Talk about your product and how you both came up with this idea and what you really want people to know that makes your product so different than the rest. I think that uh, Wendy is really the product person. I okay. had initially had the concept for solids because, and in personal care, because there was truly no form innovation in personal care. We had seen form innovation in makeup, in skincare, That's you know, true. in technology, in your phone, in your sheets, in everything except personal care. A shaving cream has been in a can since 1942. <laughs> Shampoo has been in a bottle since the 20s. It is the only thing you use every day that is still that your grandparents use the same way. And so that was really the spark of the thought, like how can we make this category better and more user-friendly for a generation of people who are no longer at a desk five days a week, who are no longer going into the classroom necessarily, who are no longer parenting the same way. Um, and that was what really sparked the idea to create a solid stick line of skin and hair care products. And then I think what what we really looked at was, okay, it's great to have this concept, Wendy. but the formulas really have to deliver. So, you know, cost of entry, they had to be clean, cruelty-free, vegan, but they had to perform. Like, no one's going to use something if it doesn't work. So, um, we have a shaving cream in a stick. So, obviously, it's better in a stick because you're not wasting product. It's not messy. It's easy to pack. But it fully lathers and it really protects your skin and gives you a really smooth shave. And our cleanser is amazing because it really, the massaging moment really breaks up what's on your skin. You Using a mask and a stick means you're not getting product all over your hands. So for us, really combining that innovation of the format with the technology of the formula and making sure we were delivering in segments of the industry that really could benefit from being in a stick. 
Yeah, I, I love it, especially like when you're taking, you're removing your makeup. That to me is like the best feeling is like, it's like you're cleaning your skin, you're massaging your skin, you know, it just feels good. So um, I, I actually, I love your products and I think that they've been Thank fantastic you. and I can't Thank wait you. to share them um, with uh, the Ladies Playbook Ambassadors. It's going to be a great surprise oh, for them. Good. I, I hope well. they enjoy them. Oh, I know that they will. I'm not worried. We um, might have sent some extra merch too. Oh, I cannot wait. So I, that's why I had to have you on because I thought this was so genius. I love that these women thought outside the box because here's the deal. A lot of people think about things, but they don't necessarily follow through, right? So the fact that you all thought about this, not only follow through, but you took your time in developing something that actually works and people want to continue using. It's it's brilliant. And to your point, people travel all the time now. You need products like this. So um I appreciate what you guys came up with. I think it was genius. Um, I want to talk about who you are, though, to the core as as human beings. You know, um, I think a lot of people, they, they, they see a product, they see the people that are behind their product, but they don't necessarily get to know about them as human beings. And we all go through things in life, no matter who we are. And so I would like you to share, what is something that you would like to share with the listeners? Maybe something that's kind of um, near and dear, maybe a pitfall or something that you've went through um, and you you know, rebounded on the side of resilience that you feel like people could relate to. You want me to go first, Jamie? <laughs> Always? Yes. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Especially on this one. Okay. So I like to say that I'm always on the run, and that's not just because I love running. I'm always on the run because I have a hard time keeping my mind at rest. I'm planning. I'm organizing. I'm working. I'm analyzing. I'm having social plans. I'm just always running. And it's I'm an introvert, so I can do that all by myself. I don't need the energy from others. And I think for me, that's what gives me, that's my coping mechanism. Mm. Um, life for everyone, I'm sure can be really, really challenging. Um, for me, my personal story um, that I share with my son's permission is my son struggles with um, anxiety and mental health um, as many, many Gen Z um, yeah. individuals do. And um, being his mom can be some of the most rewarding moments and can be really, really challenging. And we've had some really scary um, times. And I think for me, the, the kind of juxtaposition is that's something you can't plan for. It, it's not like, okay, here's your medicine, take it. Oh, look, you're all better now. And right. it looks different for every person. Um and, it, you know, for me, as someone who is a bit of a control freak, likes to have things organized, I would say that's forced me to be very, very strong, very resilient. Um, and hopefully it reflects in my empathy to other people and really my lack of judgment of other people, really knowing, you know, you never know what something someone has going on and um, and celebrating my son for all that he is. So yes, that's actually really good. Thank you for sharing that. I think that to your point, there's a lot of people that struggle with mental health. And it actually they don't know who to even talk to. Maybe they can't talk to their their family, they don't want to be judged. And so the fact that you listened and accepted and you took the steps to help him to get better. That's I commend you for that. Because I, I know you. what you're saying about like being in control. You're like, yeah, I can fix this. We just do this. And you're just like, no, that doesn't work. No, here. It's, it's it's like anything in life. You can have a plan. Right. But you have to know that plan could blow up at any second. And then you got to make a new one if you're a planner, if that's your coping skill. But you always change is the only constant. Right. So. So true. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Jamie. So I would say generally I'm a risk taker and I, I love sort of risky activities, like mountain climbing and skiing and really have tried to lean into that in my life. Um, 
and I didn't have that many challenges growing up, but my anxiety growing up, I learned later, really stemmed from the fact that I was always nervous about what was going to happen. So I would make these really risky situations because everything was sort of very, you know, Everyone was healthy, knock wood. Everyone was happy. Everything was okay. I went to good schools. And so that was sort of where I got a lot of my energy and adrenaline. Um, and recently, over the past five years, I've faced some really significant tragedy um, in my family, which is very a very, very close-knit family. And I've found, I'm not sure if it's because of that, but that I need less of that external risk taking because it feels so close to home now. And it's, you know, the things are happening that I was always mm. running away from or so worried were going to happen. Um, and I don't know if that makes sense, actually. It but definitely does. I'm this is the first Sorry. time I've said it this way. Um, welcome to my therapy session. I'm Jamie Glassman, um, <laughs> but it's been really hard through, you know, I lost in my family two of my biggest business mentors in mm -hmm. over the past four years, and doing that in conjunction with starting this business has been really emotional for me, really, really difficult, um, but I've also learned you know, how to pick myself up and keep moving forward. And that when the shoe does drop, that's not it. You keep moving and you keep showing up. Um, and so that's something that I'm sort of proud of for myself. I that's will great. say, bringing it back to partnership, we, I mean, we know each other it, in the deepest way, right? So it's not just we're business partners, we're partners. We're like all in whole life. So if something happens, when things happened um, recently in Jamie's life, I was like, I've got this, like I'm here. And I'm not just here taking care of the business. I'm here for you, your family, your kids. What do you need? When there are times where I'm like, I, I, I am like, don't know how to function today. Like, things are just so crazy, which tends to be what gets me. Jamie's like, okay, what can I do? Like, and mm. it's not just like, don't worry, I can cover this meeting. It's so much more holistic than that. And finding, you know, your, your people that you can that's kind good. of go through life and through entrepreneurship with, that's really important. It definitely is. And I think that you guys, you two, you two ladies um, are a great partnership. Like I can see it in what you say and what you do. And that's very rare. Um, you know, you hear about so many people, companies, you know, dissolving because they can't find that balance of, you know, this is what I can do. This is what you can do. It's always a struggle, right? More than a yeah. balance. So I love that not only you can um, support each other professionally, but also personally. That's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Okay, so I need you both to think of your top three suggestions, I guess I can call it, in how you would, uh, I would say, let me think of how, give me your top three suggestions in, or for entrepreneurship for anyone that needs help on the business side. Whether It doesn't have necessarily have to be starting a business. It could be something that you learned that was so masterful while you were in it, but just top three for each of you. Jamie, you get to go first this time. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I need, I need, uh, I have two. I need one okay. second to think of one more. Um, okay. So my first two, one two. is one that I didn't believe in a year oh. ago. Okay. Which is listen to podcasts. I am not an auditory learner at all. I cannot, I was terrible in school because I literally can't hear information and translate it into something. But since I started listening to podcasts at the very strong suggestion of Wendy and my husband who send me podcasts like 42 times a day that I should listen to, um, 
there are bits of information and you learn a lot. There yes. are things that you can take away from other entrepreneurs and you don't feel so alone. Even the most successful entrepreneurs have faced the shit you're facing. Yes. Um, and I think there is, even if you don't know those people and you don't have those people in your inner circle, that is very, very comforting. I think the second thing that I would say is phone a friend um, because it can be really lonely really mm. lonely and embarrassing. I just heard a, a guy from like a Fortune 10 company talk about, they asked if he would do it again, uh, if he was sitting at the table 30 years ago. And he was like, no, it was too embarrassing. It was too hard. It took too much work. And yeah. it does. It, all of those things are true. But if you're surrounded by good friends who don't let you feel embarrassed and who are proud of you and are rooting you on, or, you know, take away some of that, it's really helpful. Um, and my third piece of advice is just don't give up. Keep going. Mm. Never give that's up. I, one of, I read constantly. I, Wendy would say that's not true because she reads like 75 books a year and I read like 12. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <Don't> fact. <laughs> It's a fact. It's a fact. But I read a lot. She's reading constantly, just slowly. Got it. And you're like, speed racer. Well, Check. I, I read nonfiction. It takes longer. Um, oh, okay. But <laughs> really, the key is, you know, to get up every day and try again. And that's it. Uh, any that's great, great leader, world leader, or current business leader, has done the same thing, which is get up and try again. Awesome. That's good. How about you, Wendy? Okay, so for me, um, I don't. I would say walk before you run. Don't approach everything full speed ahead. Like, uh, there's time. There feels this immense pressure, like the clock is ticking for an entrepreneur, particularly if you raise capital. But if you run before you walk, you're going to make rash decisions. Um, and there are some decisions I would have made anyway, and probably some decisions had I walked that I would have mm. taken differently. Um, my, my second piece of advice is find the circle of advisors who can give you great advice, who can advocate for you, who can be an ally, who can advocate for your brand, who can be a voice. Find those people. Don't just go. There, there are plenty of people who are available, but really keep searching to find the ones that can be meaningful advisors. I think um, it's something that Jamie and I are both passionate about and still ha is work in progress for us. Um but they, they, you know, they can give you the advice that we're trying to give today. Right. Um, and the other thing I would say is find an outlet um, because <sighs> it, it can be like the stress and and the like energy. Like I wouldn't say today was relatively stressful, but like we were pivoting from one thing to another one. If I didn't get up and work out this morning, I would not have been, been in good shape. Jamie sometimes asks me, are you planning to go for a run today? I'm like, well, <laughs> why do I need it? But like, for me, that's what it is. And even when I don't feel like doing it, I know that afterwards it's that release for me. It doesn't yes. have to be exercise. It can be, you know, turning the lights out and watching a movie in the dark or whatever it is. Like, just find that outlet because you need the downtime. And even though you're working 24 seven, just take the downtime. That's great. Those are all great points from the both of you. Oh my gosh, that's really good. I hope some entrepreneurs really just understood, took that all in and they apply it because that actually was great advice for me too. So I appreciate that ladies. Okay. So are you both ready for the two minute drill? Yes. Maybe. <laughs> uh, see, it's, that just showed our personalities. Wendy's like, I don't know, what's the two minute drill? I'm like, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. Okay, so the two minute drill, um, it, I came up with that. It's similar to in the NFL. It's like the last two minutes of the game. It's rapid fire. I'm going to just ask you questions and you have to answer quickly. So, Okay, I'm on the Patriots. You're on the Patriots? <laughs> okay, that's actually my first question. So hold on, hold on. I got to start the timer. Oh, oh okay. 
And uh, hold on, timer. Boom. And two minutes. Okay, we're gonna start now. Name your favorite sports team. New York Giants. Boston Celtics. Oh, okay. Favorite place you've traveled to? Ogunquit, Maine. Bhutan. Mm. All right. Your Name your favorite podcast. Okay, Lipstick on the Rim. My first million. Mm. Summer or winter vacay? Summer. Winter. I love this. Books or magazines? Books. <sighs> magazines. <laughs> love how opposite you guys are. <laughs> Hosting dinner parties or attending galas? Dinner parties. Galas. <laughs> Someone else do the work. <laughs> TikTok or IG? <laughs> TikTok. IG. <laughs> totally the talk. This is great. Favorite quote? Ooh, that's a hard one for me. I would say never, ever give up. I mean, the Winston Churchill quote is what I think about every day. Okay. I don't know. I think um, no one, it's something around like you can't succeed if you don't try. That's good. Best mistake you've ever made? Hmm. Going on a third date with my husband. Ooh. That was a mistake though? Well, we didn't like each other. So, I mean, <laughs> it, I don't at know. First people, it was. people would be like, <laughs> but it was the best mistake I ever made. All right. I guess mine would be going to business school mm. or, or, right. or Oop, passing out of law school. Cause <laughs> Love it. Okay. There's a the timer. Okay. Last question. If you could tell your younger self anything, what would it be? I think for me, it would be com be more comfortable in your own skin. I've reached that point where I feel really comfortable with who I am and, and the decisions I make. And that was definitely not the case for me growing up. That's good. Um, I think for me, it would be travel more and follow the path less. Ooh. I would have told myself not to go get a job right out of college and to do the things that once you have a family, you really can't do anymore. Uh, not that you can't do, but you can't do in the same way. You don't have the same freedoms. Um, yeah. And so I would have told myself to take a more unconventional path in my early 20s. That's good. That's actually really good. Ladies, that was amazing. Okay, so I just want to know before you leave, what is next for the both of you. So for the business? Yeah, business, personal, professional, what's next for you both? So um, business, we have a lot going on. We have new okay. products um, that we're going to be launching. So imagine some of your favorite skin, body, and hair care products that could be improved in a stick. That's coming. Um, we're we're going to be venturing into brick and mortar retail. Yay. Um, personally, I think finding more time, you know, with family and and kind of away from it all, which is hard. Um, yeah, I think from a business standpoint, making Wyos a household name. Um, mm. And that was so. A you answer. I'm like, no, <laughs> pushing forward, like very specific facts. And Jamie's like, household name. Yeah, there's a story that Kurt Cobain walked into the recorder and they had like lived in this tiny house and he walked into the record producer's office and they were, and he was like, what do you want to be? And, you know, they had been like a garage band and he was like, the biggest band in the world. And Dave Grohl was like, what are you talking about? I, I, I want to be the biggest brand in the world. Uh, Love it. I love it. And personally, uh, we'll see how much time there is <laughs> other than doing that. Facts. 
tracks. Okay, ladies, if people want to know more and they want to get a hold of you, where do they reach you? Our- DM us on Instagram. Or our first names at wearewyos.com. They can email us. First names at, okay. But put the name of the podcast in the headline so we know that's how you heard about us. Yeah, and we'll make sure to add it um, in our notes as well so that they can um, find you. You two are phenomenal. It's so great to talk to you. You're amazing, Atoya. Thank you so much, Atoya. I am so inspired by the both of you, and I'm so happy that I get to share this brand that I've that I've used and I enjoy and I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy lives to be on Inside Lines podcast. So thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that's our show for the latest on the Inside Lines podcast. Make sure to follow on both Instagram and Facebook. You can also check out the website InsideLinesPodcast.com and listen to your favorite episode. Lastly, check out the YouTube page, Inside Lines Podcast, and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you know when a new episode comes out. And please leave an amazing five-star review online and let us know who you'd like to hear on Inside Lines Podcast. Until next time, leave it all out on the field. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.